Hey guys, Double Wide Six, and today we're looking at a pretty good mower score for me. Normally, I don't buy from people that fix mowers. This guy owns a hardware shop, and um, he goes through and fixes mowers. And I think he got a little backed up. We're getting into winter here, so he let me go through and pick out what I wanted. I paid twenty dollar a piece. Got seven mowers. Uh, yeah, there might be some pretty serious issues with these. I tried to look at them close. I didn't notice any non-compression issues or bent cranks or anything like that. But uh, I'm pretty busy this time of year and I uh, figured we'd just uh, go through and do some lawnmower videos. It's been a while. I also got a new camera, so I'm curious to see how this thing works. I haven't had a chance to use it. So it's a bit cold out. So I got the pellet stove going. It's working very well, keeping things warm. And this year I also put in the uh, mini split. I'm running the heat pump on that, which is good down to negative five, or sorry, five degrees Fahrenheit. So I really like using that. And this is actually the first time all year I'm actually supplementing with the uh, little fireplace. All right guys, so here's the setup. I'm standing on the mat. And I'm running with my Harbor Freight toolbox here. So that's on wheels, roll that out. And up on the cart, I have the cart just like Bruce Pender. He, uh, I talked to him about that a couple years ago and I have mine set up just like his. I added a metal rail and I extended the deck a little bit on that thing just so that we can keep the, uh, these lawn mowers just like this or bigger snow blowers on the cart and I've been using this cart more and more for unloading my truck for like snow blowers instead of getting out ramps I'll just put the snow blower on the cart and then jack it up and put it on my truck for a customer so uh, anyhow I don't know anything about this mower I took a quick look at these things I didn't want to spend too much time this thing the oil looks brand new uh, I'm kind of curious why the guy would uh, not fix it he wasn't there i was talking to his father it's like a hardware store in my area and um i already had this flipped over on the side um i pulled the plug on each one spun the blade and checked for bent cranks and that and, and you know maybe it has a self-propel problem this, this lawnmower looks pretty good so uh what we're going to do is just uh, start going through this thing all right, I put together the handles and the, the cables got some kinks in them, but they still work. So I may uh, replace them. That plug looks pretty good. I'm gonna spray a little fuel in there and just see if we have spark or if this thing pops. See what we get. We know there's oil in it. Okay. Sounds like the blade's hitting something. Well, I don't know how I missed this one, unless I didn't check it. I thought I checked this one, but it definitely has a bent crank. I don't know. I mean, it's, this thing's really bent. Uh, luckily, I got a crankshaft straightener, so we're going to give this thing a go. So they actually have brand new oil in this thing from the looks of it. So I'm going to try and keep it. All right, guys, this is my crank shaft straightener. So I have it mounted up at the table. I just did that because I got rid of my old bench that used to be here. And uh, I don't use it that often. Last time I used it was summer. But what's amazing is how bent this thing is. So you can 
take a look at that crank and you can see it's very bent. So the first thing that we got to do is uh, we're going to try and slip the sleeve on here. Now this thing comes with different size sleeves. Uh, I don't know, I think, I think this one's a 7 8 inch. So we're going to slip that on there like that. And what we're going to have to do is, is just tighten this bolt a little bit up here. Because this thing's so bent, I can't even uh, turn it over when the sleeve's all the way in. So I just got to get a wrench for that. So we're, we're already straightening it a little bit. Now we'll back that off. See if we can at least uh, rotate around. I already uh, used a clamp. Yeah, we're hitting the top again. So go a little tighter here. And you don't want to bend this thing all at once. You want to do this in several passes. You can feel the, the pressure as you tighten up these bolts. Do it another half a turn. And you're just slowly trying to work the metal. Not really using this crankshaft bender the way you're supposed to yet because I can't even get the sleeve on here. Yep, we're hitting. I'm going to bring up this bottom bolt a little bit just so it meets and we're going to bring this down. It's possible you can break the whole block and usually the crankshaft kind of flexes back when you use this thing they do take some getting used to looks like now it might turn getting stuck there Gonna take a look at it. I think we're hitting that bolt. There we go. What I want to do is just take it right there is the top. I want to try and push that down a little. Gonna get a hammer and tap that. Now that bolt's hitting that sleeve. Just put a little bit of pressure on this and see if we can't get it to rotate around for us. I'm watching that needle. All Let's see. All right. Now we can at least work the machine. And I'm just going to show you guys this arrow here. And we can just see 
how far that crank is off. All right, guys, we're about ready to start straightening this thing. Now that we got it to fit through here. Um, so the first thing you want to do is un unlock the, the bail brake, take the spark plug out, drain the oil, get everything all set up, and you're gonna watch this needle, and you wanna you wanna find the lowest part of the needle, which is about right there. When that needle is down low, that's where the crankshaft is bent up. So we need to push that down. I'm gonna mark this right there so we know where that is. And then what we're gonna do, they don't tell you this in the manual, but I've already had the sleeve slipped on, on the shaft. So I want it held tightly against that shaft. So I'm taking the blade bolt and I'm just using a sleeve, a scrap, basically piece of a pipe, you could call it. And we're gonna tighten that on there so that that sleeve is basically bonded with the crankshaft. So I'm just gonna snug that up. All right, so that should help keep that against the crankshaft. Now what we wanna do is we want to rotate this thing around. You could also put a wrench on there, but we'll rotate this around and there's a bottom bolt. We put the bottom bolt on there snug and then we bring down the top bolt and we're gonna gradually tighten this thing until uh, we get this thing to straighten out. So. When you tighten it, you gotta watch this arrow. I'm gonna go about to the middle line. It's starting to get really tight here. Now I'm gonna go back. It's still real tight. And there's always some spring and you're never gonna get this thing perfectly straight. If you get it within two lines, that's really good. All right, so we wanna watch this, this uh, needle. You can see it's not quite as low as it was. And I'm gonna pull this thing over. So both my, my bolts, my crankshaft straightener are loosened up. And you can see we're going up three lines and we're going down about seven lines. So we got a lot better. We wanna go till the arrow gets down which is right there. And if you notice, our yellow mark is indicated right in the same spot. So now what we're gonna do is apply some more force again, the same way. be good and as I said you don't want to do it all at once you want to gradually work it so now both bolts are loose and we're going to spin it and we're going to watch the uh, arrow so we're down about We're up about four, and we're going down about two, four, six, seven, eight. Down eight, up four. Okay, so there's our low spot, and we're just gonna keep continuing this process.
we're down about four and up about two. The only thing I've noticed is that our lowest spot is slightly off the yellow mark. So we're going to try it right here. And as I tighten it, I can watch that arrow. And go one quarter turn here. So it's just a matter of taking your time. And keeping your eye on that arrow and we'll see how we're doing here we're within two lines which is really pretty good uh, this thing never zeroed out perfectly on on any engine I've had so I think the needles actually bent but we're going just below the center line and then we're going down to we're about three lines so I'm just gonna go one more time fine-tune this so I did it one more time and this is where we're at we're we're flickering between a line and two and uh, that should be plenty good. All right, we're going to strip this thing down here. All right guys, we got it all back together. It seemed like the hardest part of this thing was just getting that engine to line up back on the frame. But everything's back on there. And looks like we have a fuel line leak. I'm going to just try and adjust this clamp. Sometimes there's barbs left in the clamp and it doesn't hold right. May need a new fuel line. Doesn't look like cracked. Got to get the gas cap on there. Oh yeah, the line's cracked. Tell you what, I'm going to see if this thing runs before I start screwing around with that. Well, it looks like it's going to need a little bit of carb work too, but it wasn't vibrating, which is nice. <laughs> 